So we have previously already seen what pages are and that records are stored in pages on disk. Now if you go to the disk and look at files, which consists of many, many pages, there are multiple ways how to write data into these files or pages. The easiest way to do this is using a heap, which is basically here an unorganized file. So um, a file that does not follow any sorting order or something, it's just a set of records stored in pages in this file. And whenever a page is full, we, we create a new page. So we are appending and appending data into this one file. So it looks in the end a little bit chaotic. So if the different shades of blue indicate different values, for instance, a name or matriculation number, you see there's no order here. So what are the pros and cons? Well, the good thing is that insertion is very efficient because we would just append at the end of the file. On the other hand, if you search for one specific value, for instance, one matriculation number, we have to somehow find this position and we do this by going through this file in a linear fashion, sequentially. So this is, of course, not um, very cheap. We will see later on when we talk about different forms of indices that there's such a heap structure might be used in combination with a secondary index. But more about this later. The other option is to use a sorted file. You see already here in the illustration, it's nicely sorted by the, for instance, matriculation number or name of a tuple. It is clear that keeping this file sorted is more expensive, so the insertion is more expensive than for the heap. But if we want to search now for a certain value, for instance this one here, we can somehow use some sort of binary search or like a smarter index structure like a B plus tree on top of the sorted file. So the access is direct or kind of direct, but in the end it's of course, um, however we call that, much more um, or much, much less expensive than for the heap organization. Right. So here's an example with some real data, a file where the tuples contain student information, like the student ID, or we call that also matriculation number, the name of the student and the semester number the student is in. You see here that the file is sorted or the tuples in this file are sorted based on the name. So the first block or page contains tuples Aaron, Adam, and so on. And the last page here, we have Wright and Zimmer, right? So it's, a, it's sorted based on the name of the students. This is only one way we can sort this file, or we can organize these tuples inside the file. We could also sort by student ID. We can also sort by semester. But the important thing here is to note if we have such a file, there's only one sorting order this file can have. So this file, we assume there's no replication of the file, so it's one file with the tuples in the file, and these tuples can be um, sorted in one way, but not in two or more ways. Now when we want to now investigate how we can search inside the files, and there are three ways we will briefly discuss, so a bit more in detail using indices. The first thing, the first search is very simple. We call that a linear search. You're going through the entire file and you're trying to find the tuple if it's existing. If not, then well, there's no result. The second way is using binary search on sorted files. That seems to be faster than linear search but still there is a trade-off between random accesses and very cheap sequential accesses to be considered. In any case, you would not use binary search, but if the file is sorted, you will construct an index over these sorted tuples. And this is our main concern when we talk about database systems. On the other hand, the linear search, although it's expensive, is always applicable because uh, indices require that you're creating them 
and they also come with a certain overhead, a linear search is always possible. When we talk about indices, for instance, like a typical B plus tree, at some point in the B plus tree, this will happen at the leaf nodes, there is now an entry for a certain um, data record and the of a certain information in the database, for instance, a student. And there are three possibilities displayed here on the slide. What is it, what is what can be stored in this um, in this entry in the index? The first one, the first possibility, is that we store the actual data record. So we go down when we search, we go down in the tree, and we find the real data record. So the student tuple containing all the information inside the tuple. The second possibility is that we do not store the real data there, but we have a pointer that we call here a record ID that points to the page and the slot inside the page that contains the record we are searching for. The second possibility, third possibility is that we use, instead of one pointer, like a set of these pointers pointing to all the tuples that have this certain key. We can further classify indices according to the following categories. And here again it's important to remember what I said earlier, that each file can have only one certain sorting order. So there cannot be multiple ways to sort the file. So if the file is sorted, there's one order, right? So if we have this file now, which is sorted uh, let's say in a specific order, and we build an index over the same attribute or attributes which are, which are used in the file to sort the tuples, this is called a primary index. Right? So if we have like a B tree or B plus tree, and let's say a B plus tree, and we have a file in a certain order, and we have the B plus tree created on the same key. This is called the primary index. The uh, next possibility is that we have a certain sorting order inside the file, and we have an index which uses the same sorting order, but the attribute is not unique. That means the attribute contain, can contain duplicates. This is called a clustering index. In general, clustering indices, um, or an index is called clustering index, if the um, if the sorting order of the file and the index is the same, except for the case where we have a primary index, when we have like a let's say key or unique column. Last, secondary index. This denotes the case when we have a file with a specific sorting order or no sorting order and we have an index on a different attribute than the ordering of the file. Now interestingly, if we have a um, secondary index and we said already that each file can have only one specific sorting order, but secondary indices we can have multiple because we don't really need this correspondence between the keys used in the index and the key or the attributes used in the file sorting. So we can have multiple secondary indices. Another way, more orthogonal way, to classify indices is um, looking at single level versus multi-level indices. A single level index is a very simple index where we have links inside the index to records or pages. So we have one level that we call the index, another level we call the uh, data for the file, and they are like links from the index level to the file contents. Multi-level index is what we use in practice and the most popular example of such a multi-level index is the B plus tree. And the difference, of course, is that in a B plus tree, um, in contrast to what I have drawn here, 
we can also have more in more levels so an index entry here can also point to nodes of the index and not necessarily only to um, data stored in the file so the, not not only to tuples but also to other index entries coming back to the clustering index again there can be only one clustering index because there's only one sorting order and again it's important also following the definition from the previous slide that the sorting order does not have to be according to a primary key uh, it can be anything if you want to do this in postgres we create an index on the columns we want it to have uh, to be on and then we have to execute the command cluster table name using index name and then it will or postgres will reorganize the data on disk following now the new sorting order and then the index here would be my index is a clustered index and we can have only one clustered index because it's only one sorting order but we can have multiple non-clustering indices because there the index can be um, according to arbitrary attributes and not necessarily the one that is used in the sorting of the file that's important also to, to remember here's an illustration of a clustering index so typical b plus tree style index we first have here on top the index entries and then in the leaf level the data entries of this index and here also you see that the index itself is also stored in a file here we call that the index file and from the data entries of the index we have pointers to the data file data records and since this is a clustering index you see that the sorting order of the data entries or the index entries follows the same sorting order as the data records have so that you have nicely these arranged pointers in the same order for both the data entries and the data records yeah so the sorting order is the same between index entries data entries and the data file and this of course has some benefits let's say we want to search for a certain key we walk down the tree to this um, position we find the corresponding data entry and there we have now a pointer the smallest one to this data record and now we can read here the entire information from the data record so in this case um, these two right this and this because of these links and then because of the leaf level nodes are sequentially also pointing to each other we can go on and walk here on the leaf level over the clustered index and then we can also sequentially read here the data file so the reading of like um, ranges is very cheap here in a non-clustered index this looks really different the first part looks still the same so we have index entries and data entries in our index file so our index structure but now since the the sorting order of the data entries and the data records not the same we have these weird looking um, jumps from one data record to the other if we're following some pointers and even so we have keys in the same data entry you see that the um, pointers to the data records can go to arbitrary data records and if you now want to read like a single entry no problem we can do that we go down and let's say we come here then we're looking up let's say a certain name and then the pointer will tell us go here now we go there and retrieve it and this has a certain cost so it's, it's one access to disk for the data file and then we retrieve the information we're searching for the problem however is if you're searching for ranges of uh, values for instance you say you want to have all um, student where the name starts with m or higher or larger in lexicographic order again you have a query let's say m 
the name you're searching, you come here, you look for m, then you get a pointer to the smallest value where m um, is called, where the student name is m. Let's say it's, it's this one. Yeah, well, next, well, next this one. And then you have to go here and you have to go here. So you see that um, by, by accessing one data entry, inside here you have pointers and they point you to arbitrary locations inside the data file. And each of these accesses costs again some 10 milliseconds. So you're jumping around a lot in this data file and this is expensive. And this highlights the classic um, compromise between or the trade-off between sequential accesses and random accesses. We call these um, jumping around in a file arbitrarily, we call that random accesses and sequential, it's kind of clear, sequential accesses. And if you have to read a whole range of tuples, sequential accesses are much more efficient than these um, multiple of random accesses. And this also comes later on when we talk about index tuning. We want to understand which index we should create. And if you have a query which happens frequently, for instance, I want to see all the students which have a certain semester number or higher. And if this happens frequently, you might want to have the sa same sorting order of the index and the data file, because then you can benefit from sequential accesses. If this happens only rarely in the query, then you might not need to do it because it's easy to um, do it one or the other time. But if this happens frequently, um, you might want to reconsider or you want, might want to consider building a clustered index on this attribute. But, but more about this later.